Hello, and welcome to the Work Inspired Podcast. I'm your host, George Lucas Pfeiffer, and on today's episode, we're so lucky to have the Chief People Officer for one of Chicago's most iconic and well-known brands, the maker of delicious food, Portillo's. Jill Wade is here in the studio with us to talk in person about the company's expansion plans, how to create a high-performing team that knows how to have fun, and also the importance workplace culture plays in organizational success. Let's not waste another minute. Work Inspired starts right now. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Really excited to have this conversation. I know we had to reschedule it because I was sick last time, but really, really happy we can do this in person and so excited to kind of talk about your story and also the story of one of my favorite restaurant brands. Oh, well, thank you. And it's an honor to be here and I'm glad you're feeling better. And uh, it's it's amazing being able to talk about an iconic brand like Portillo's and you know, and with guests like yourself who who love our brand. Perfect. Let's start with your story. Tell me how you got to where you're at today and kind of give me the, the cliff note version of your professional journey. Great. So uh, cliff note, and, and I'll start really early on how I even got into restaurants. Mm. Uh, my first job was at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. So I was a birthday party hostess uh, and then even spent a, a stint as the, the mouse. And so I think it was always in my blood <laughs> uh, to work in a place that was fun and that uh, really had an impact on people. Mm. Uh, and Chuck E. Cheese, uh, for the year and a half that I was there, uh, you know, really instilled that in me. Uh, and so I think that gave me my, my love for restaurants. I moved into a variety of different industries, ranging from electronics and retail with Circuit City back in the day, mm. uh, if anyone remembers that, <laughs> uh, to fitness industry, mm. uh, 24 hour fitness on the West Coast. Uh, and Sephora and, and also a grocery chain before I have, you know, came uh, to, to Portillo's. You know, from an experience and a company standpoint, I've worked in all different industries, which I, I think has really rounded out my experience. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, not only where have I worked, but the type of roles that I've held. Uh, most, you know, most specifically starting, uh, you know, as a manager at, at Circuit City and then moved into HR mm. and held pretty much every role that you can experience on, on an HR uh, standpoint. Uh, and, and then also moved back into operations. Mm. So uh, my passion for people, not only on the HR side, also translated into being an operator mm. uh, and really more focused on that team member and that guest experience. Uh, and when you bring the two together, the impact that that can have um, on people, but also an organization. So. Uh, I've been really lucky to to experience different companies, mm -hmm. uh, different industries, but also different roles uh, that I think has really contributed to, you know, my ability to where I am today. Yeah, I love that. I mean, because when you think about a people leader, mm -hmm. you often think about attracting talent, retaining talent, yes. the culture of an organization, and and the, that's the, work, the, the, the employee experience, correct? Yes. Yes. And it's interesting how that role has evolved. I, the, the thought of the operational piece being layered onto it is is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So Jill, you've moved around a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you started in Chicago, but I, I know you've moved to Florida and to uh, to California and Richmond. Yes. Uh, what what was the reason you came back here, or what actually was the reason why you decided to come to work for Portillo's? Yeah, so I left Chicago when I was nine. Uh -huh. uh, my dad wanted somewhere warm, so we headed to Florida. Uh, and when we would come back uh, to visit family, we would always stop at Portillo's uh, and have Portillo's with our with our cousins and aunts and uncles. It was funny when I lived in California, the closest uh, uh, Portillo's are down in Southern Cal, uh, Buena Park uh, in Moreno Valley, which I lived in Northern Cal. Uh, and anytime I would be down there, I would drive 45 minutes out of my way to go get my Portillo's fixed, <laughs> even though I hadn't lived in Chicago since I was nine. But when the recruiter reached out and I opened the uh, the email that said Portillo's, I said, oh, my gosh, I, I have to learn more about this opportunity because mm -hmm. uh, it, it tied back to my my childhood, my childhood roots mm -hmm. of memories of this amazing food, of the hot dog and beef that I would eat, uh, along with my my cousins and my aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I was like I was going home. And and then when I, I met the team and got to spend time in the restaurants, I was like, this, this is where I needed to be mm -hmm. um, personally and professionally, even though I was moving uh, a freshman in high school uh, and a seventh grader. So mm -hmm. could you imagine that conversation? Mm -hmm. Uh, but once they got here and they uh, had the chance to spend time in a Portillo's, 
they've said, mom, we understand. And this is a, a great organization um, that have treated them like family when, mm. when they moved. Uh, and so uh, it was a tough decision, but it was the right decision. And it, I wouldn't ever look back. It, it I, I love that story because it shows that those memories from the past mm-hmm. that you formed at Portillo's aren't just a nice story. They can actually impact the trajectory of your life and your family's life. Yes. You moved from California to beautiful Chicago. You know, here <laughs> we are in January and, you know, it's, it's been a little cold snowy. lately. Yeah. But what I think is important about that too is that there is something unique because we've all been in a lot of restaurants. Mm-hmm. And there's something that's different about the memories made at Portillo's. And even even when when I found out that you were interested in being on the show, I remember saying the second I found, I was like, "Oh, Portillo's," you know, like. And that was because I have memories like that from Portillo. So I don't know. I mean, I mean, I know in this conversation we're talking about some of the reasons mm-hmm. why that is the way it is and why Portillo's is special, but it is substantial. I mean, the way that the, your organization has created experiences has allowed them to kind of transcend time and stick with people Mm -hmm. that like make them excited about the brand and about the company. And in your case, about going to work, moving across the country to go work for the company. Absolutely. And it's become generational. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, I saw, I saw a a TikTok yesterday where uh, a teacher was teaching Portillo's to their first graders. Mm. Uh, And so it is, it's going to be something that I think will stay and be a part of people's families and lives for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, And that's why I, I feel really strongly we are a national brand because it's not just Chicago food, mm-hmm. it's memories within the family yeah. and how we come together um, and enjoy uh, amazing food um, at a table together. And the food is great, and the quality is amazing, but it, I, it's not just the food. No, it's, it's the experience you have when, yeah. you, when you go to get it. Mm-hmm. I know you said you went from management into people, into HR. Yes. What about people and human resources mm-hmm. and people leadership? was attractive to you? It was attractive to me because being able to make an impact and seeing individuals who may not have believed in themselves, Mm -hmm. uh, when you can give them just a little bit of belief that they can do something, um, that the impact that that could have. Mm. Uh, and even for our guests, uh, and you know, at, at Portillo's, when, when they come in, you know, our purpose is about creating lifelong memories with our unrivaled food as an, and experiences. And so the experience part of the lifelong memories, our guests talk about how they come to our restaurants to uh, enjoy our chocolate cake because it was a memory that they have with their grandfather mm. uh, or with their soccer team. Uh, and that's the same thing with our team members. Our team members are there because they have memories uh, when when they were a little kid or a guest. Mm-hmm. And so from an, in, an HR and an operations standpoint, being able to bring both of those together, uh, it really fulfills who I am uh, and being able to see uh, you know, individuals be able to become the best version of themselves. Mm. I don't usually ask this question with guests. We always ask the, the professional story mm-hmm. of the individual. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our listeners are in, in the Chicagoland area. Mm-hmm. So I think they'd be familiar with the Portillo's brand. Yes. It's been around as long as I can remember. And you talk about those memories. I remember going with my family after hockey games and that's where we'd go, you know, mm-hmm. and some of us would get the Portillo side and some of us would get the pasta and the salad side. And tell me just a little bit about the, the, the company history of Portillo's mm-hmm. for those who might not be aware. Yeah, so uh, Dick Portillo started the company um, over 60 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he really, you know, took the time to study, you know, other organizations, uh, and then make it his own, Mm -hmm. uh, and say, what is unique to our organization, not only from an experience standpoint, but also the quality of food. He had introduced what we call QSAC, quality, service, attitude, and cleanliness. And that's something that we today, uh, very much instill in our, in our team members, uh, and, and it starts from the time when you walk into a Portillo's, and mm-hmm. actually it's even outside. If you are outside of Portillo's, you can't help but smell the food already. Mm-hmm. And so it just brings you in. And when you're in our restaurant, um, it's it's kind of like Disneyland. You look around and there's different lights and there's uh, different pictures all around. And so you're just, you can't wait to look and see uh, what is maybe around the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then our food, our, our menu is, is expansive, you mm-hmm. know, ranging from, you mentioned pasta. Mm-hmm. So we have some phenomenal pastas to chicken tenders to our world famous beef and Chicago style hot dogs. Uh, and so there are so many options, salads. Uh, we have some phenomenal salads. And so our, our menu really is 
uh, available to um, whatever somebody is, is looking for. Mm-hmm. And we have our amazing desserts and shakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's not just our food, but also uh, the fun experience of rhymes. When Dick was looking at the organization, it's like, well, yeah, we can just use numbers mm-hmm. to call someone, say, hey, number 20, your food is ready. But how boring is that? You know, number eight, you want to go on a date, your food is ready. So, uh, and our guests, you know, really enjoy that. Mm. And so it's about, creating an entire experience, not just about the food, uh, but the time that you're in our restaurant or even going through our super fast drive through The drive through is impressive. That's what I usually mm-hmm. do because I go once a week and I that's interesting on the rhymes because I was going to call that out. It, it's unique and it's memorable. The operational excellence that is that drive through mm-hmm. that's unrivaled. I think that you guys do a great job of, of, of and those, those are long lines, you know, mm-hmm. and you move them through pretty quickly. So well done there. Well, I had my own experience last night. My, I have my parents in town. They're going back to Florida. Mm. And so I couldn't go home without their Chicago mm-hmm. um, style fix <laughs> and uh, was in the drive through. It was raining. Mm. And our team member had no idea who I am. I'm a regular guest. And she, you know, how can I help you today? Had a full smile on and offered, um, my mom loves their beef beef sandwich, got a beef. And she's like, would you like peppers on it? Would you like it dipped? And so uh, that experience in our drive-thru is truly special. And it all goes to our team members Mm. uh, because they truly care about delivering that great experience to our guests. How does the culture that a guest would experience in a restaurant translate to the culture that you're creating on the corporate side in the workplace. Mm. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it, it translates because we're all grounded on our North Star, uh, mm. what we call our heart of Portillo's. Uh, it is our purpose and our value. So our purpose of, uh, and we use relish, we relish uh, the opportunity. Uh, we have to pine, we're a fun yeah. organization. Yeah. Uh, we relish the opportunity to create lifelong memories with our unrivaled food and experiences. Uh, and our values are family greatness, energy, and fun. Mm. And those values and purpose were not created by a bunch of executives sitting around a table. Uh, they were developed um, by our team members for our team members, both in our plants, our restaurants, and our support center. Mm. So that North Star that we are all um, guided by uh, is lived in our support center, it's lived in our restaurants, and it's lived in our plants. Okay. Uh, and we also look to our support center team members as spending time in our restaurants. Mm. So we, we say, look, if we're trying to solve a business challenge or we want to understand what's going on in the organization, uh, it's about being as close to our guests and team members as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we have an appreciation um, for what's going on. Uh, and we really uh, embody that culture um, across the entire organization. Mm-hmm. So obviously the in-restaurant experience, I mean, I've talked about the drive through but mm-hmm. it's it's an in-person experience, right? Mm-hmm. You go there and you, you, you can sit down, you can interact mm-hmm. with the people, you can see the smile on their face. What's currently the way of working with the support center, for example? Well, that you know, like that's obviously top of mind for a lot of business leaders. Is how much space do I need? Are we going to be in person? Are we going to be hybrid? Are we going to be remote? Yes. What is the Portillo's thinking on that? Yes. So I can share where we are today and then where we're heading. Okay. Uh, so today uh, I call the support center a bit of choose your own adventure. Mm. Uh, and what that means is if you want to come into the office, you can, and you have a permanent spot that's mm. yours. Uh, and if we have individuals that want to work remote, they can work remote as well. Uh, and we have hoteling space. Mm. Uh, I think where we're heading uh, is more of a, a hi- more of a traditional hybrid. Okay. So three days in the office and then and two days in remote. Mm. And the reason behind that is as we have been you know, researching what the ex- uh, workforce is looking for, uh, but also how we can best support our restaurants mm. and our plants um, is that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, uh, being able to balance and collaborate, and uh, you know, create relationships. We're very much a relationship collaborative organization, mm-hmm. and sometimes that's hard to do on teams. Having moments in the uh, in the support center uh, will allow that to happen. In addition to spending the time in our plants uh, and in our restaurants um, collectively. Yeah, that makes sense. And we're that's where we're at currently is the three days in, and we're seeing the three to four days kind of be what the majority of organizations, and for the same reasons you just described, is it's great to have the flexibility that is offered by hybrid working and remote working, but true relationship building, collaboration, innovation usually spurns from these types of in-person interactions. Mm -hmm. So, And it doesn't mean, how we're looking at it too, is it doesn't mean that if it's a Wednesday and, you know, let's call it an office day, Mm -hmm. that if someone has something going Mm -hmm. on, such as, housework happening, uh, you know, a roof being fixed or someone has a doctor's appointment. It's what we did before the pandemic. Mm. 
work from home. And now we actually have the tools like Teams and yeah. other, other ways to yeah. do that. So flexibility, uh, how we're looking to define it is that balance between being in the office, the time at home, but when you need to, to, to do what you need to do and have a personal life, we want to be able to enable that. Yeah, I think that's very smart. We create workspaces at BOS, but we always say that uh, even the best designed, the best furnished, the best whatever workspace is nothing without the people. Yeah. So it you know the, really the people are, are the main objective mm -hmm. in any space that you create. And so I love talking to people leaders because I'm interested in if you think about the the concept of a great place to work mm -hmm. or the best place to work mm -hmm. for your organization, what does that mean to you? What it means to what it means to me is that our team members are feeling uh, that we are living our purpose and our values, mm -hmm. uh, that they are feeling that we are, we treat them as family. And what that means is we have each other's backs. Mm -hmm. uh, and have each other's back doesn't necessarily mean that someone's a pushover. Uh, it is a good balance between if someone needs help, we're there for them. Mm -hmm. But it's also accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've learned is our team members look for us, look for our leaders to hold people accountable uh, in doing what they're saying they're going to do in their job, um, but also enabling them with the right tools and resources to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that they are continuous improvement with our, our value of greatness uh, and that we are supporting them with that journey that they, you know, that they are looking to always get better. Energy for us uh, in, a, in a great place to work is uh, having an attention to detail and a sense of urgency, especially if with you know a fast-paced Portillos, mm -hmm. and then and then having fun, and so that's how we bring our purpose and life to values. In addition, is we spend a lot of time in developing our talent. Mm. Uh, we have huge growth aspirations. Uh, we open twelve restaurants uh, this year is looking like our number with that it takes a lot of leaders mm -hmm. and a lot of team members so we've created development programs what we call ignite uh, that develops individuals before they're mm -hmm. actually um, moved into a leadership position so they're ready uh, we have a total rewards program which looks at competitive base pay uh, benefits uh, that are relevant to our team members mm -hmm. such as education a new time off program uh, and so we, we look at, you know, creating a great place to work as holistically of a great culture. Are we developing and inspiring and motivating our team members? Are we creating a total rewards package that they're excited about and that mm -hmm. they actually value? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, are they being recognized and rewarded mm -hmm. uh, for the work that they do, um, both at Portillo's and outside of Portillo's? Very cool. I mean, you've got the benefit of having these restaurants, which mm -hmm. are possible recruitment grounds, right? Where yes. you can have people start off in a certain position and maybe move their way up. Or mm -hmm. do you, how often do you look within before you look without when you're thinking about a promotion or filling a role within your organization? It's our primary strategy. Mm. Uh, it is, uh, I would say right now we're sitting about 80%, if not more of internal promotions. Wow. Uh, and that, that stems from, uh, you know, our Ignite program. When we were looking at our, our growth strategy, one of the things that we said is, um, the best talent is within because mm. uh, they know they know who we are. Um, they're they're living our culture. They get our Portillo story, mm -hmm. which is really special and unique, and they believe in our story. Mm. And so we we start off with what we call our career interest day, mm -hmm. and it's for t any team member can come and learn about the Portillo story. Uh, learn about growth opportunities, not only at the support center, we have new restaurant opening teams, but also leadership roles within the restaurant. And, and then from there, they can apply to what we call our Ignite program. Uh, the Ignite program is by level. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have crew chief, restaurant managers, assistant general managers, uh, GMs, and then market managers. Mm -hmm. And so at every level, uh, individuals uh, apply and then they go through this program uh, where we teach them both soft skills, life skills, mm -hmm. essentially, uh, and Portillo skills, because when they're growing, we don't want them to just feel that they're growing uh, for just Portillo's. We want them to feel like the skills that they're learning today are transferable at home mm. um, just as much as it's at transferable at Portillo's. Uh, so we're really excited um, about that. We had, uh, I got an opportunity yesterday to speak to two of our leaders uh, who, who facilitate these learning programs, and they share two stories with me. One of them being, uh, we do a big graduation at the end. Oh, it's cool. a celebration. And we have team members that have said, I've never graduated. Mm. And uh, I was able to go home, tell my family I graduated. I get a little emotional because yeah, it's, it's cool. really inspiring. Yeah. Uh, or I used to live in a car. 
And now I have a house over my head that I have can afford because I'm growing with the company. I'm now a manager. Wow. And so um, being a being able to have an impact like that has really meant a lot to the organization and to our teams. Yeah. And I was going to ask that because obviously you've got within any restaurant, you've got a lot of different levels, mm-hmm. right? And you can start off whether you're in high school or you know, yes. if you're washing dishes or whatever the level, whatever the job is that you start it with. But there's so much upward opportunity yes. to have a program like Ignite seems like a great way to, to offer that mm-hmm. or to show that path or that ladder. I guess my question for you is when you're looking, I mean, expanding to 12 stores, you're hiring a lot of people. Yes. Whether you have 80% opportunity to grow with mm-hmm. it, you still have to hi- put a lot Absolutely. of new people in the in yes. place. So how do you, at all these different levels, mm-hmm. how do you identify the people that are good cultural fits, you know, mm-hmm. and we're going to talk about the, the fun piece. How do, you, yes. how do you pick the people at all these different levels and make any sort of sense of that? Mm-hmm. Or how do you increase your chances that from that first hire, even if they're, I mean, living in your car, that I didn't even think about that, but you know, yes. like how, how do you find, how do, how, how do you as a people leader try to identify the people that will have the ability and the, you know, the personality or the, you know, whatever it is that will enable them to stay at Portillo's mm-hmm. for maybe mm-hmm. their whole career? Mm-hmm. What we know is we have a robust uh, learning and development program. Okay. So we know we can uh, we can train Portillo's. Mm. Uh, but what it's harder to train is uh, purpose and values. And you mentioned character mm. earlier. Uh, and when we developed uh, our harder Portillo's, one of the things that we said from the very beginning was we are going to hire to that. Mm. We're going to attract talent. Uh, so even as we are working with our marketing team on uh, sharing the Portillo story, it really does start with um, our, our harder Portillo's. And so we uh, we use that as the, the first check. Uh, a team member, or I should say a candidate, will either select in or select out based on what they're seeing mm. uh, externally. And then our managers, our leaders, they select uh, candidates based on uh, you know, interview questions that we have that are all geared around uh, the, you know, creating unrivaled experiences mm-hmm. and what does, you know, how have you um, brought family to life? Uh, can you share a story about how you, know, you have used, um, you know, an example around family? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't have to be in the restaurant industry. You know, mm-hmm. we have, uh, you know, as you said, teenagers uh, who are, uh, you know, who are leaders in sports mm-hmm. or they're on academic teams or there's so many experiences that uh, they can bring forward to our Portillo's. Um, through uh, you know family greatness energy and fun, so it really starts uh, it really starts there. Mm. Um, and then the second piece is what we have found is our our best ambassadors of our brand are our team members. Mm. Uh, we hire over probably thirty percent of our population comes from friends and family, mm. uh, and so our referrals are mm. our, our biggest uh, source of uh, of candidates. That makes a lot of sense. Let's go to energy for a second, because mm-hmm. that's, I, I imagine that that might be something that would be evident in an interview process or as you're trying to attract the right people is mm-hmm. what's the energy level. And I have noticed that the energy level of the team members in the drive throughs and in the, in the restaurants, it's different at Portillo's than it is at other places that I've been. Mm-hmm. So are you actively looking for, like, how are you gauging energy when you think mm-hmm. about people working for Portillo's? Yeah, so there's a there's a, a perception that energy uh, is only like uh, in, is interest of maybe an extrovert, extrovert right? Like yeah. you're super outgoing and all, and that's not how we define it. We mm. define it as do you have a sense of urgency and do you have an attention mm. to detail? Because mm. um, a, a sense of urgency, uh, if you look at our runners, uh, the individuals that are bringing you your food in the drive through, yeah. uh, what we're looking for is. Uh, do you do you notice that the, a car may be waiting a while, mm. and and do you just go check in with them and say, hey, it's only going to be a couple more minutes. Thank you so much for waiting. Mm-hmm. That's a sense of urgency mm-hmm. that you've noticed that a guest uh, may have been you know waiting for you know for a little bit period of time, uh, or taking an initiative uh, that they see, hey, I'm going to go help this team member. Mm. Uh, and so it's that sense of urgency that when we're asking questions and they're telling us the stories of how they're doing that uh, is how, you know, is how we're gauging it. Uh, and, you know, and from attention to detail is ensuring that when our guests receive um, their orders at home, that that it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we have a catering business, some things, you know, that we uh, may not necessarily be as known for, but uh, we have huge catering uh, as well as our delivery business. Mm-hmm. So uh, we want to make sure that when a, a guest uh, places an order online and that it's going to be delivered to them, that it's going to be there at the time that 
that it says it's going to mm-hmm. be. Uh, and our team members know how important that is. And so that sense of urgency um, comes to life that way. I like that you said that that, that energy can be applied to all people, not mm-hmm. not just extroverts, but the in, introverts have their own form of energy. Absolutely. And it's, and it's just as important and valuable in its own way as the extroverts. Mm-hmm. So very cool. Yeah. All right, fun. So you talked about the rhymes. Yes. What are some of the other ways that you have fun at Portillo's? Oh, gosh, there's so many different ways of how we have fun uh, at Portillo. So I'll also speak to an experience at our, our restaurant support center. Okay. Uh, so our restaurant support center, uh, as I you know mentioned, of how yeah, how we're leveraging hybrid, mm-hmm. uh, we have created what we call our catch-up week. So going back to fun, mm-hmm. punny. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what catch-up week is, is our all the team members of the support center uh, work from the office that week, that mm-hmm. entire week. Uh, and that week is focused on uh, communications. We do our town halls. Uh, we do development sessions. We host uh, experiences, maybe some happy hours with some uh, fun drinks that are named uh, by the department that's hosting them. But we also uh, do fundraisers for our Harder Portillo's Fund. Mm-hmm. Our Harder Portillo's Fund is a uh, is a 5013C that we that we started during the pandemic when mm-hmm. we found our team members maybe didn't have the money to to take care of their families. Uh, and so we raise money and we do um, silent auctions. Uh, we uh, are doing uh, right now, you know, a Super Bowl uh, sheet um, to see who's going to win that. So that's a little bit of fun uh, in competition at the same time. Uh, and and it's, it brings us all together. It's a fun way to do that and for a good reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it, all the money goes to our fund uh, that in turn goes to, a, goes to our team members. Mm. Uh, so there are so many, uh, so many different ways uh, at our, our plants. Uh, we have our beef bus. Mm-hmm. So we actually have, uh, you know, also known as our food truck. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the beef bus will go to our, our plants. We'll make a day of it. So our, our plant team members get to experience uh, the beef bus and, mm-hmm. uh, and all the things that go along with it. So we try to do it in a variety of different ways, yeah. you know, maybe just not the typical way of how other organizations may view it. Yeah. And I think part of that is the experiences that you're creating are memorable and unique and yes. therefore fun. And, yeah. and then one of the things I was going to ask you is that everyone's idea of fun is a little bit different. It is. So sometimes when it's, it's, a, it's a key pillar of the company culture, mm-hmm. or I don't want to say mandated, but it's like, we're going to have fun at work. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes people might be like, eh, you know, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. have fun outside at work. Or on the flip side of that, yeah. you might say, all right, wh- at what point does fun get in the way of profitability, right? Mm-hmm, and how mm-hmm. do we make sure we're doing our work instead of just having fun all the time? Do you have any thoughts or advice for other leaders? Because I think everyone, every, most people want to smile and mm-hmm, laugh. Mm-hmm. And it's just a part of being human, right? right. Keeping business objectives in mind. Mm-hmm. How do you find the right balance of fun? And also, how do you make sure that it's genuine? I love the puns. Yes. But that it's not just marketing that's fun washing, whatever the right word is, yes. and that it's not, it doesn't come off as insincere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, would, I can think of two ways. Uh, one, we provide, we have what we call our Frank's a Lot Fund. Okay. Uh, our Frank's a Lot Fund is money that we allocate to the restaurants mm-hmm. uh, for them to use uh, in any way that they want to recognize and reward our team mm-hmm. members. Uh, and, you know, one story that comes to mind uh, that, you know, reflects fun, but also, you know, contributes to the business in a really special community way is uh, we had a restaurant that uh, had a lot of seniors that were graduating. Mm-hmm. So they took the money and they had uh, yard signs made for every single team member, um, their name, the year they were graduating and something special about them. That's cool. All of those yard signs were uh, placed in the drive through mm-hmm. So our guests got to see them uh, and when and had their, their picture on it. And so when a guest saw our team member who was on a sign, they congratulated them wow. on, on, their, on their graduation. Mm-hmm. And so it was a fun way to celebrate our team members but also from an organization, it also showed our commitment to our community mm-hmm. because it's it's our fellow team members, um, fellow community member who is you know graduating from their high school, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not just about a restaurant on this particular street, but it's about a restaurant in Willowbrook, mm-hmm. um, and we have a bunch of team members that go to high school mm-hmm. around that area. Uh, and so it's how do we integrate it into the way that we do business, mm-hmm. but in a way that our team members feel like, and it is genuine because it really does come from our hearts. Yeah. Uh, and then I would say another way uh, is our holiday helper program with our, our support center. So every year uh, we, uh, we ask for volunteers 
uh, at the sports center to volunteer their time during our most busiest season uh, to spend time working in our restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've learned from that is our, our RSC team members come back and say, that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And here are the memories that I have from it. Uh, and so, and it contributed to the business outcome at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, not only financially, but our RC team members got a chance to work closer to the business and experience things uh, maybe that they oversee. So mm -hmm. like my team, it's like, oh, well, maybe that process we need to improve because mm -hmm. when I did it, it was really tough. Yeah. Or maybe marketing and catering. It's like, maybe we can tweak this a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way it's easier for our team members and creates a better guest experience and then a better financial outcome. Uh, and so we, we've we been able to incorporate the two uh, in a way that I think has been meaningful. Yeah. I, that, the, the yard sign idea, which is awesome. Where did that idea come from? Did it come from that? You said Willowbrook. Did mm -hmm. it come from that restaurant, or did came it come from, from okay that restaurant? So that's so cool because I think what what that shows is that you're enable you're, you're you're enabling the opportunity to do something memorable or fun mm -hmm. or unique, but you're not mandating it from your support centers. Mm -hmm. You're saying make it your own. Mm -hmm. You probably, I mean, so that sounds like that wouldn't just be a good idea at that restaurant. So mm -hmm. then you can enable sharing across your, your organization and say, this were, this was cool. You know, this was different and it was unique to this space, but here's mm -hmm. an idea that worked over here. Maybe it works you know, in this location too. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really cool because it, I mean, I was actually going to ask you one thing that I've always been impressed with because we're in Chicagoland is there's a big Chicago tie into Portillo's too, right? Yes. And even when you hear about it talked on a national level, we were just talking about you know how they mentioned it on Smartless podcast. There's a Chicago layer on top of it, mm -hmm. and so even though you guys are growing quickly and you're getting a lot of visibility outside of mm -hmm. this market, you still kind of have that local you know tie-in, and I think mm -hmm. that's also part of a genuine culture. Is mm -hmm. That's your identity, right? Absolutely. One of the, I think, the biggest compliments that we've been receiving, because uh, one of the questions was, well, can you grow outside of Chicago mm -hmm. and still have that special sauce of who you are? Yeah. And we're now in Texas, uh, that we're continuing to double down in, in Florida, uh, Arizona, and our guests have shared with us, it's just like home they mm -hmm. remember. And mm -hmm. even new guests who had never experienced the Portillo's, uh, I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. I never would have expected this. And so uh, how we've been able to uh, take what has been here mm -hmm. and turn it into a national brand uh, has all been um, the hard work of our, our team members uh, and and being able to show that this brand is scalable mm -hmm. and it allows us to create uh, more fanatical guests and obsessed guests mm -hmm. uh, and team members who uh, can't wait to tell their friends and family about go try this new place um, in Claremont, Florida, or, uh, you know, in the colony, Texas. Yeah. Uh, so it's really exciting to see. It's clear that there's a lot going for Portillo's. Mm -hmm. You've got great food. You've got a fun culture. Yeah. You've got, you know, a fun experience. What advice would you have for a people leader at an organization where it's not so obviously fun mm -hmm. like how i mean like I, attraction retention we've we think we've seen in the in the workspace side that people leaders more so than ever before are sitting at the table helping to make decisions around space mm -hmm. because as we all know the people are the most important you know contributor to mm -hmm. an effective space so yeah. i guess from your experience as a people leader outside of the awesomeness that is portillo's mm -hmm. what 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 do you look for as far as you know attraction, retention, maybe return, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as, as, as a driver now, but I'd be interested if you had any perspective, maybe a little outside of the Portillo's focus. In my experience, I'd say staying true to who you are as an organization. Okay. Uh, the more, when I've seen organizations try to be something that they're not, mm -hmm. or try to emulate another organization, that's when I've seen it's generally have gone sideways. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting closer to your team members, getting closer to your guests of understanding what their wants and needs are also understanding what is the trend, what's coming down the line. So starting to look around the corner, because mm. it's not about just today, but how do you plan for the future? Mm. Uh, so that way you can pivot fast enough and yeah. start planning that ahead um, is, is, I think, been what I've seen work for organizations. 
uh, and, and spending time on the front lines, getting their feedback, getting their perspective, uh, and then, you know, being able to share that, you know, with, with your partners mm-hmm. um, has been where, you know, I've seen the, the, the best success come from mm-hmm. uh, and being willing to change mm-hmm. uh, and make the tough decisions uh, when maybe sometimes people don't want to make those tough decisions. Yeah. Well, and every organization has challenges, right? It's probably Absolutely. not all, all, you know, fun and games at Portillo's, but I, I, I think where you guys have your situations, you've got this great history, mm-hmm. right? And so yeah. you're building on that, but you're also growing very quickly. Mm-hmm. So you're saying, like you just said, one challenge is how do we make sure that we have that kind of success in Texas or, you know, nationally? I think some other organizations might say there's so much change happening and so much transformation mm-hmm. that maybe this is the right time for us to think about, re- you know, reinvesting or or, or uh, reimagining our culture and how mm-hmm. could we be the next version of our organization, even if we're 100 years old. I think it's a very interesting time, especially as we come out of the pandemic and people are rethinking ways of working and the idea mm-hmm. of flexibility and technology. And this is a great time to be thinking those things. It is. But obviously change is scary too, right? So like, you know, and, and obviously your, your industry was very <laughs> much impacted like ours was Absolutely. during the pandemic. So yeah. What advice do you have as far as navigating change or dealing with mm. transformation uh, that you could offer to others? Uh, you know, the pandemic, I was really lucky to see um, see firsthand where when change is handled really well, mm. the positive, and then when change is not, what could essentially happen with that? What I saw when it was handled well, it is staying true to the decisions um, that you're making, uh, even when they're hard. There could have been times where it would have been a better decision to, let's say, save money mm-hmm. instead of investing it into our team members. And we made some tough decisions. We didn't furlough any of our team members mm-hmm. during um, uh, during the pandemic, not one. Wow. Uh, we gave individuals the opportunity that if they wanted to work less hours or not work because they were fearful for whatever reason, uh, we wanted them to have that opportunity. So putting more of uh, the ownership in their hands and so empowering them. Uh, We also took the time to provide them the right skills to be able to absorb the change. Mm -hmm. So explaining the why we were doing things, what was the impact to them, what's in it for them. Uh, Because we we learned that when we share the why and then even engage them in helping us to solve Mm -hmm. what we're trying to solve, uh, it calmed people down because they knew that we really did have their back. Mm -hmm. We were trying to do the right things for the right reasons. Uh, and sometimes that, sometimes in a leadership role, it's not easy to make the right decisions for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you may have some outside, um, you know, outside individuals telling you, well, maybe you should be doing it this way. Yeah. But um, always trying to do the right thing for the team uh, has, has served us very well. I hear you saying, make the decision, stand by your decision, but mm-hmm. also communicate and, yes. and be open to listening. And mm-hmm. you know, because... You might understand why the decision was made, but you can't just take for granted that everybody understands it that way, right? So Absolutely. I like that. And if you need to change the decision, so not every decision is going to be right. Mm-hmm. Like we learned that we had to pivot in the moment a variety of different ways uh, is being able to acknowledge, okay, great feedback. We're going to go ahead and make that change. Yeah. And so our team members appreciate that when we have a, a two-way conversation and dialogue and, and we hear them and we make the changes uh, the relationship between the organization is even stronger mm-hmm. uh, in that they know um, that we are trying to do things uh, that is for the betterment of their experience, but also the guest experience at the same time. Mm-hmm. And keeping in mind shareholders, yeah. like, uh, you know, now that we're a public company, we definitely are taking those that into account. Uh, but even even before, uh, you know, being privately owned, we still have a responsibility to um, to our owner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, we're essentially trying to to meet, you know, three different groups. Yeah. Um, How do you balance the family aspect of your mm-hmm. culture with the the new public, you know, the the, the shareholder perspective? Mm-hmm. Well, shareholders are our family too. There so, you like, go. once I you're you'd say that. right, once <laughs> you're uh, once you're a part of the Portillo's family, you're kind of always. And uh, if you're if you're a shareholder. Uh, you're you're part of our family yeah. now, and you know, we want to treat them as family as we would, mm-hmm. you know, our team members. And they have a vested interest in our organization. And mm-hmm. uh, and many of our you know our shareholders, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, they they invest in us because they they know Portellos mm-hmm. and they they believe. And uh, and so we we do try to to take into account um, what's most important for our team members, what's more impo- most important for our guests. 
and what is most important um, for our shareholders uh, without, um, you know, maybe prioritizing one o- over the other. It is definitely a balancing yeah. act, uh, especially, you know, from a people perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have a, a great CEO who thinks about that each and every day mm-hmm. and, and challenges us um, to think about that as well. I think, I mean, and you guys have the benefit of the restaurants and the support center. And you've mm-hmm. got, you've already had different kind of stakeholder groups, but from a marketing background, I've always loved when there's organizations that are able to blend customer and employee experience mm-hmm. because there's so many s- synergies between them. If you can create a great employee experience or a customer experience, why can't you with your employees or your team members mm-hmm. and vice versa, you yeah. know? And it's those little things, you know, it's, you know, like the yard sign is a great example. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was an experience for both. Uh, and and it was personal, but it kind of transcended the internal and the external. Uh, and, and maybe that's there's some similarities there between the family history and now the public, you know, future of the Portillo's company. Yes, so. absolutely. Every episode, we we finish with a couple kind of personal questions. Sure. So, um, so these are those questions. Uh, Next 12 months. It yes. can be professional or personal, mm. but what's something you're looking forward to? Ooh, uh, wow, that's a great question. Mm. Uh, personally, the next 12 months, and I guess this is like a bitter, bittersweet one. Uh, my younger son will be graduating from uh, high school in mm. about a year and a half. So uh, I'm excited for him and his next journey. Professional, you know, we're just getting started mm-hmm. uh, in our growth. Mm-hmm. I know it's crazy to say, mm-hmm. uh, but but we are. And that growth is going to come in so many different ways, uh, from bringing on new family members to Portillo's mm-hmm. and, and seeing them pat, um, pay it forward mm-hmm. uh, in whatever that may, may mean. Uh, I'm also excited. We're exploring how we leverage technology different uh, and empower our team members more uh, with uh, a communications platform where we can share best practices amongst uh, our restaurants or our team members mm-hmm. and recognize uh, individuals' accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, how do we free up our leaders' time uh, that are not focused on tasks, mm-hmm. uh, but that they can spend coaching and developing our team members uh, and and time with the guests versus uh, maybe looking for a piece of paper yeah. instead. So. We have a really uh, a really great strategic plan of you know continuing our focus on becoming an employer of choice, uh, moving into new frontiers uh, all over the United States, uh, and you know with really great operations. We have a great operations team, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 how we work together uh, as a senior team, but also as an organization uh, as one family. So uh, lots to be excited for. A lot <laughs> yeah. to be excited for. I mean, obviously, you've had a lot of success in your career. Mm-hmm. What's what's a resource that's been valuable to you that you could recommend to others? Ooh, a resource. A resource that's been valuable um, to me would be uh, networking in in relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, when during the pandemic, when this was new to everybody, mm-hmm. uh, being able to reach out uh, to uh, different mentors or partners. Uh, or individuals in in the network, that has been the most valuable Mm -hmm. uh, to get different perspectives, to challenge my own thinking and also have these these relationships across all these different industries. So, you know, I would just encourage, you know, leaders to be lifelong learners, Mm -hmm. uh, never stop learning and growing Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, leverage your network uh, and build networks that uh, can, you know, be a resource to you. Yeah. Great advice. What's some advice you'd leave for your team or who's ever feel it, you know, going to be walking in your shoes next? What's your advice for future leaders? Mm-hmm. Uh, you just gave some great advice with the networking piece. I would say stay humble. Mm. Stay humble. Stay close to um, our frontline team members. Mm-hmm. Uh, never stop listening and learning and hearing on what we can do better. Mm-hmm. Um, what are our strengths? So not only can can you learn from uh, your growth areas? But I think you can even learn more from your strengths and continue to build on those. Mm-hmm. The humility part comes in is you're never done. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot to um, to be happy about and successful, uh, but there's also a lot that you can improve. Mm-hmm. Uh, so not letting that ego get in the way and, and really just stay close um, to, to your team members. Great advice. All right, one last bonus question. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite thing on the Portillo's menu? Oh. Okay. Right now it's the Maxwell Street Polish. Mm. Yes. 
Mm. It used to be the beef and the the hot dog, but those are still close uh, close seconds. Uh, it's now the Maxwell Street Polish, and I didn't know that until I started working for Portillo's. Really? Yes. Huh. So it is a it is a it's a secret it's a secret thing on the menu that I don't think uh, many of our guests get to enjoy as much. Well, now you know, and Jill, this has been as amazing as I imagined it would be. Thank you so much for the insight, the Thank inspiration, you. and and the time today. I really really enjoyed hearing a little bit more about the Portillo's brand and also learning from your story. So thank you for being here. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to rate our show. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Work Inspired podcast so that you don't miss any of the incredible guests we have planned for upcoming episodes. We'll continue to find the best and brightest minds in business so that you can learn, grow, and succeed, and so that we can all work inspired. Work Inspired is brought to you by BOS, a leader in commercial working environments and a Hayworth best-in-class dealership. Experience our 360 approach and discover the team, tools, and techniques required to navigate the complexity of your next workspace at BOS.com. If you have ideas, feedback, or would like to be featured on our show, please email podcast at BOS.com. Thank you for listening. This has been a Workspace Digital production. If you're interested in launching a podcast at your organization, please email info at workspace.digital for a free consultation.